On Thursday night, as we know, at uh, 10 to 12, it was announced by State President Jacob Zuma that indeed our national icon had died. Millions across the world are gathering to mourn his passing while still reeling in shock over the news. During these 10 days between the announcement and the funeral, the SABC has embarked upon a journey with you, fellow South Africans, as we salute and reminisce about one of the greatest men that ever lived. Few have withstood such injustices, such atrocities, and yet he willingly smiled as he served with devotion. You will already have seen during these past four days and will continue to see for the next six that the SABC has special broadcast on all our channels to honor and remember our hero, our icon, our father. The nation and the world have been praying for Madiba for a long time. South Africa and the world have lost a true freedom fighter, a liberator, a humanitarian, a father, a thinker, and a visionary. In fact, so many names. Children's champion. Absolutely. We could go on and on. He was, democracy. he was a true, true passionate leader who, uh, whose dream and, and focus was to liberate and unite South Africans, a dream that he managed to realize in his lifetime as he assumed presidency in 1994, leading the country to a democratic South Africa. Dada, today we thank you and we salute you. Well, we know for a long time he went in and out of hospital and we as South Africans went on to high alert, in fact, people all over the world. And we knew though that this day would come. And now that moment is here. And it is difficult and it is painful to accept what happened and we are a country in mourning. Uh, you know, one of the Twitter messages I saw said that it is, uh, we expected it, but it is difficult to accept. Now, Utada Matiba was a light to many. His legacy and values will live on forever. The song from St. George's Cathedral Boys Choir, Eternal Light, is perhaps the most appropriate way to begin today's broadcast as we remember Matiba, a man South Africans cherished and loved. St. George's Cathedral Choir there with a eternal life and I think Madiba's light will certainly shine eternally in all of our hearts, our minds and in the books of history. As many say, he is probably the greatest son of the African soil. Now, even though death is part of life, it is certainly not easy to get used to. When it happens, many of us turn to our cultures and religions. We find refuge within our various faiths, our spiritual leaders and institutions for guidance and inner strength. Our first guest today is Dr. Mulalu Nemabandu, who is from the Kara Heritage Institute in Pretoria. Good, e good afternoon and welcome. 
afternoon. Dr. Namabandu, when we look at this from an African perspective, how does the nation deal with the loss of such a huge icon as Matip? You know, the dream of an Africa, uh, that uh, one day a son of an Africa will rise and take Africa to the world spectrum, is as old as colonialism. We have had uh, many uh, historians, uh, prophets and religious leaders talking about this dream. We never realized that uh, that son of Africa was indeed amongst us. It's only today that Mandeba or Mandela has departed that we begin to realize that uh, his name and his impact far exceeds what we actually thought this great leader was about. Mandela is indeed that African son, the one that many historians, researchers, and, and spiritual leaders have been talking about to say one day this son of African soil is going to take the world, uh, Africa to the world. Indeed, the world is here, is here to witness this great day. Uh, as Africans, as Africa and as South Africans, we did not only lose an icon, we are indeed here to celebrate the impact made by this great leader. And you, you talk about the world, and certainly he was a world leader, and you say the world is coming here. It certainly is. We've got dignitaries arriving from all over the world. But, Doctor, very often when one loses um, somebody who is so significant in one's life, you tend to lose traction, like physical traction. You become disjointed. You're not mm. quite certain, you know, where do I go from uh, to from here? And I think as South Africans, there is that concern. You know, what next for us? What do you think? Most definitely. In fact, um, you know, South Africans are looking upon uh, the leaders uh, of, of, of Africa and to say, who are we going to, 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 to truly uh, pick as the new leader that can actually represent Africa mm -hmm. the way Madiba has done it? Um, there's always a feeling that we have lost uh, the continent. Uh, uh, that the continent must rise again. Mm. Uh, but in principle, you would then realize that what Madiba represents uh, to this day is so significant that, uh, you know, having lost such an icon, the only thing we can do is to live upon his ideals, uh, to follow on his footsteps. You know, it's unfortunate today that we still have religious conflicts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, um, Christians fighting Muslims or the other way around. Madiba had always advocated religious tolerance and that is one thing that the world must actually follow, adhere to and lead by example. And uh, unfortunately, we would love to talk quite lyrically about uh, the role of Africa, uh, especially in uh, this uh, new African renaissance, but uh, we have to wrap it up there. As we try to come to terms with the loss of this great figure, let us also take this time to reflect on Madiba's legacy of reconciliation. I have shared, shaken hands with her, and I've had tea with her. Did you have a breakfast tea or normal tea? Well, no, I had coffee. <laughs>